Hello and welcome back to the Ingle Nook project. I am Revolution Rail and today we're going to be doing some building. Now you may notice in front of me I have already have a bit got a building. Now this is what kind of what I aim to do in this episode is create a building. Not this building, this building is like a template a what kind of what I want to have there but not actually what I want there kind of thing it's just a placeholder as such because I built this ages ago and it's kind of the right size for me really it's kind of the right size this is the size of the building that I want to build there so today we're going to be scratch building a sort of shed place thingy I don't even know what to call it now you may notice the layout has changed a bit since the last time we saw it. In the last episode we didn't see the layout at all. So in this episode we're going to be scratch building using plastic kits. Now when I say plastic kits I literally mean these sort of things. These are Willis kits. These are just some bits of uh, plastic, I've uh, already opened one which I can show to you now these are basically just pieces of plastic that we can incorporate into build say for example a wall, that's a perfect height for a wall perfect size really there so I guess let's start with design okay so I've drawn up some plans and this is what I want it to kinda look like when it's finished now this is obviously gonna be a update video rather than a how to show you what to do kinda video then I guess so basically just to go through it we've got brickwork down here then got like wooden panels. I'll see if I can show them to you. You'll see them. Then some corrugated iron up here, and that's what I'm going to be using. And inside, I'm going to have concrete floor, and I'm going to have some breeze blocks or concrete blocks, whatever you want to call them. Then I'm going to have a drain pipe running down this side from the roof, and a old air vent kind of thing here. I'm going to use balsa wood to create the detail for all of this. And the same with this door over here. I'm going to use balsa wood to create this door. This is a fire exit. And up here we've got a vent, like an extractor fan, because this is going to be like a workshop kind of area. So let's get on with building that. I'm going to be using matchsticks and card for the internal structures to hold up the plastic bits. So let's get straight into it. Okay then, I've sent, done some work and this is now the floor plan. As you can see these are separate, separate bits here. All cut out with a nice uh, angle on there. This is the uh, floor plan. Now I used a template that I cut out with an A4 piece of paper. Which is this size and I thought, yeah that will make a good template. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sticking it to this piece of cardboard. So to give it a nice rigid sort of base. Now when it comes to seeing the edge of the cardboard from the outside, because obviously when you put these two together, you're going to see that lip of cardboard. I don't know if you can make that out. But there's a lip of cardboard, that which obviously you might not be able to see on camera. You can definitely see it here. So when we come to making the roads and that, we're going to hide that up by putting gravel right up over it. So let's glue that on. Okay, now that's all in place. You can see where it's all going to be going. It's glued down. It's on a piece of card. This is where it's going to be sitting. If we zoom out slightly here, you can sort of get a relation to where it is on the baseboard but there we are let's move on to the next section now 
Okay then, I've made a start on these walls. Um, these are the inside walls on the near side, so technically you wouldn't be able to see these, say from like a model show sort of thing, but for me, I wanted to have this building completely fleshed out. So I put these walls in, and as you can see, I've joined them together using some matchsticks. Now we're gonna get some of the brick and some bolster wood and we're going to put the balsa wood along the top bit here and then the brick along the bottom bit here just so then when we come to put the wood on there is a space between them and they're not level so we can overhang the wood so let me get started on the brickwork of the balsa and once I've done that I'll show you what it looks like then okay so it's been a while now and now we've got a finished panel wall here as you can see, maybe should we turn on my other light? That'd probably be a good idea. Now, as you can see, we've got the finished wall panel. We've got brickwork along here, and then the wooden paneling along here. Now, if we look closely on this side, you can see. Let's zoom the camera in a bit so you get a closer look you can see that we have got matchsticks in there nice and neat on the, this is the back now so of course there's a few joins there's some yellowy stuff on that I don't know where it's come from but yeah there we go there's a nice wall panel there are a few gaps here and there which I addressed when I address at some point I mean they're not you do get gaps like this in brick walls that is n normal because they don't build walls this long because this is pretty long uh, but there's some other stuff I wanted to show you now obviously those walls are pretty plain so I've been experimenting and come up with these now let's move the camera in and have a little bit closer look Okay, let's start off with this one here. Now this one looks like a very clean mortar. This is the first one that I did. And I used oil pastels for these. I just like your normal like art ones like these sort of looking ones. Some oil pastels like that. Now obviously I'm gonna buy some cheaper ones to do most of my building with or something cheaper if I'm going to use this this is just white oil pastel it fills and grooves nicely just, I just wiped that away with my finger and it looks quite more detailed let's move on to this one this one again is also oil pastels but I've put in a bit of black now I know I've put a bit too much black in there so when I come to do this I might use grey or I might use less black um, but that, that gives more of a better effect of what I want and I think I might be covering my entire building with this with the brickwork now I just want to show you my other experiments that I did so you you know this one here is a uh, white acrylic now I was hoping it would give the same effect as this but clearly it did not it just ruined the brickwork to be honest um, it stained it all white and it didn't really go in the grooves now I tried that again with a darker one now this works much better than this acrylic, this is also acrylic but because it's darker you can see it, it, it seems to work a bit better but I don't, I don't think it's, it's not as good as that so we've got that also what we have is we have our wood pan panelling obviously it looks like that normally but I'll put some extra bits on it now that's the wrong way around this is what it looks like normally this is using oil pastels and I don't really like that you don't really get too much detail and this is using acrylic I've used brown and black acrylic here it's really picked up the details nicely there. now it does it looks more like wood when painted like this 
but just lift it up you can sort of get a bit more tone and shadow to it same with this I will lift it up so you can see sort of it if it was had light you can see def from that to that you can definitely see the shadows help it out so much better now with these I'm going to be using this one in the middle painting my whole thing like that obviously m variating the colours as I go along brushing it different colours because obviously wood isn't all the same along so yeah that's that Okay then, I've got my template here for the front. Now, I've come on a bit of dilemma, because I've got this, which I want to put on the inside, which can sit here. So if I lay this down first, you can see that we're going to want to lay this one here, and lay one on top. But here's where my problems start. This one's slightly shorter, because I've used it. And see doesn't quite fit now if we turn that around put down this end it also wouldn't quite fix it's too short now to overcome this problem I've literally shifted that up and put gonna cut two little squares out either side for this but this is quite a lot of waste and I'm not happy with that but that's what we're gonna have to do and I'm going to have to buy some more of this because I've now run out after this so let's cut this out get all the glue together, you've seen all that before I've showed you with the side panel it's basically the same but one thing before we go obviously this is going to have some sort of door so for a door I've got this, these are sandwich bag ties, they're really quite flexible and they fit in this gap nice and ne neatly and even just like this you can see how they look like shutters they can come up go all the way down to be closed obviously these would be stationary because they're pretty flimsy things really they're meant to be torn off that is literally what they're designed for but I'm using it as a sheet comes as a sheet, I don't know where I got this from but yeah, there you go. So I'll cut this out and have a look at it after we've done that. Right, so this is the back side. You've probably seen the back side of this this panel. I'm not going to turn it over because I've done some work on the other side. Um, and I want to do a big reveal afterwards. So I'm going to be working on this side now. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting it all black. I know that sounds pretty insane because obviously it kind of already looks a bit like the texture I want don't know if you can see that don't know if it wants to focus see there is sort of a texture there now what I want to do is paint it all black and then with some kitchen paper obviously usual kitchen paper just dab it off and eventually it should look like something like this if we can put a focus something like that come on see that's got a lot more detail than that even from a distance you can see that's got a lot more detail it hasn't got any more detail it's just got colour so we're gonna paint all this that color like that and we'll see how it looks so probably be probably uh, 20 minutes from me no time for you now I know what you might be thinking what has he done to that wall uh, yeah this is a finished product I think looks quite nice obviously tissue paper is a bit worn now some bits are really black but basically, all I did was just go over like that, just rub it off basically. Dabbed it at first till it was sort of dryish, then rubbed it to get these nice lighter marks, and then left 
sort of around sort of the corners not, not so much call that and the more over here actually it's a bit darker don't know why but along the bottom and along the top where obviously loads of dirt builds up it doesn't get cleaned obviously this is this building I'm making is a workshop so it makes sense that it's all going to be grimy inside and everything I think it's come out quite well I mean you're not going to see this in a finished product but it's worth having that little detail there so I'm going to move on to the next section and show you what's up so before we get into any sort of detailing I thought I'd show you this panel this is the front entrance so we've got see the doorway top bottom it lines up with the other bit perfectly ish I say perfectly it's not that good and we've got this nice sort of shutter that comes up and down it doesn't actually move it's glued in there permanently um, but yeah it looks really good if we take a closer look at it if my camera wants to go into there you can just sort of make out there is a bit of texture there now that these are sandwich bag ties so they're very extremely cheap very cheap so so we're good now at the end of this video I'll tell you how much what we've done in this video cost me um, and you'll be surprised I think we might not we might just go oh, that was that was what I was expecting I was saying it's not really like extremely cheap like a few pounds it's more expensive than that so now we're going to do before and after but not on this panel or maybe on this panel but this is before so obviously we've got bright orange bricks no textured um, wood and obviously plain back but we'll leave it back for now because I want to get and do this make it look brilliant so that's Put some texture on this and do before and after. Okay, and here's the big reveal. Now, I'm not going to move the camera around or anything to show you little bits that we've done. You'll see that at the end of the video. But if you want to see how this is done, we'll move on to that next. I'll just leave it a little time for you to take it in. Yep, that's enough time for you. Okay, let's move on. Right, now you've seen the big reveal, we can go and show you how we how I was doing that brickwork and that so you can see how to do it yourself. Now like I said, been using oil pastels. I've just gone for the ones that I had, if my camera can pick that out. Just nice oil pastels like this. They're very cheap, about four quid maybe you could pay. Um for a pack and that, that loads of colours in there. So I'm just using white and this is an example of what I'm doing, I'm just literally going over it and just covering it all white. And I'll continue doing that but it's going to take me ages to do. Then the second thing I do is I come in with a grey like this but it's not going to pick it out. So I get my grey and what I do is just streak over the uh, not all of it but quite a bit of it just to get rid of all that whiteness so now see I put a bit of grey in there now what I'm going to do is get some black and you've got to be very careful with the black very careful just do a little bit sort of give probably enough. Then I come in with a um, skin toned one kind of that sort of colour and just do a few like bigger bits just trying to get in those gaps and I can go with the black, go with the grey, just get in there and that's about that so yeah let's show you what to do next. So you've got your um, pastels in the brickwork but of course it looks very white now what I tend to do is get a pair of tweezers just run through 
all the horizontal gaps. I mean, you don't have to be accurate. Just it gets in the gaps a bit and just scrape out the excess, like so. Now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to run along it with my finger, just trying to push what excess I have in. Try and mix it all together, blend it well. Trying to get it in those gaps. Now most now we're going to go back through the uh, tweezers. Now this should definitely get quite a bit of stuff off. It shouldn't take too long to get through it all. It just helps break it up because you don't want your brickwork level. Brush that off. Now what I'm going to do is, because you can still see it's quite white, so I'm just going to go over with the corner or the edge of the tweezers, it doesn't matter how you do it, or which direction really, just try and scrape off that top layer. And you can see the colour is coming through very nicely. right down to all the uh, parts. Now I suggest when you do this you do it diagonally across the brickwork. Um, that tends to help the most. You don't get stuck in the grooves if you do it diagonally because if you did it like this way or up and down you can kind of get stuck in the grooves so it's easier just to go sideways with it and they, there you go now you may be noticing that um, there's a bit at the top there that doesn't have anything in well I'll tell you with a little pop like that we've opened our paint and we want to get a brush brush out nice brush just wet it slightly no you can't see this just getting a little bit of paint on my brush tip there. All I'm going to do is get up in that gap and just brush the bricks. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit more water on my brush and just try and clean up a bit more there you go now when that dries you won't even notice a difference so let's move on to the woodwork now okay so I've got a tray of paints here and this is for the woodwork so I've got a few colours of brown and some more brown these two little splodges here these are my primary colours, these are my secondary colours. I know they're all brown, but to get the picture. Now this is the uh, best brown. I'm telling you this, you'll find that in a minute. This is best brown, second best, third best. See those two details. So the reason I'm saying they're that colour bestness is because the order that you should paint your bits of wood in is your second best paint, then your two t details, then your third best, and then finally finish off with your best colour. Looking one, best one that will match. So let's show you how to do that. So below here I've got my drying piece of wood. Now you probably, probably saw this in the reveal, but I haven't revealed it yet, if you don't understand. So basically, you can see I've there was these like just here, you see there's some orange ish. You can see there's different colours in the brown as you go along. That's important, you want that, you want that to have the detail. Now if I bring this down, I'm gonna leave it in shot, bring this 
basically what I did is I got paintbrush make sure to get all the water that I just washed off it because the plastic doesn't like to uh, so I've got this one and just make sure you've got some on your brush don't have to be too careful just make sure you get it close to where the uh, strip is brush it down let's do another one there maybe that end bit maybe that one now the reason you do the secondary colour first is you can tend to when you've got um, loads of spaces to fill in you tend to put loads of, of this colour down that's the only reason that you do this one first That's you mean you don't have to do it first but I found that people tend to want to put more of this down well I wanted to anyway just as you can see I put quite a bit down compared to like if I was to find this by five I would definitely not have painted that much it's quite a lot of painted but you just got to keep going like that and obviously all the way down this side and then you get the two detailing do a few like this here just a few like three or four of those ones and maybe if the other colour matches more do a bit more of that but there you go so after you do that you'll then try and add some more detail by putting black paint in like splodges really watered down by the way and just dabbing it off trying not to take this paint off now I don't really need to show you that because it's pretty basic but that's how I did this texture okay so it's dry now and I've decided to go against my idea of putting black in there um, it looks fine just how it is and it's still quite effective, it looks like real wood now compared to what we had earlier which was that and frankly that's much better even though it's the same material just a little lick of paint so yeah I'll, get, I'll show you the final structure again okay and now we have it the finished product all put together now this is the first time me seeing it, this is not the first time you are seeing it because you've probably seen it probably in the thumbnail or in the little reveal we did earlier because I'm yet to record that so I, I want to show you how I put this together um, because I came across quite a few problems when I was doing this one of the things being the panels they don't exactly line up properly and then I tried gluing it together and it just ended up taking loads of my time up and not actually working so if I take this camera off the tripod we can't go and look because I don't want to move it that much because it's still quite unstable so let's go take this camera off the tripod and go have a look at what's inside so we go over the top here I don't know if you can make that out like a little red box there this is like holding together all these walls I'll see if I can get another angle on that for you there we are it's literally just like a little toolbox put it in the corner it looks quite nice there and it's holding up the entire structure of the um, building which is quite insane so yeah this so obviously this is the end of the video but it's clearly not the end of this build now this is taking me a lot of time figuring out some new techniques to do uh, like the brickwork and the paint I had no idea what to do with those so that took me time probably started this project this year so in 2018 and today's the uh, I can't I don't know what day is. We can see the day it was published. That's when I'm recording this. And that's how long it's taken me just to do what you see in front of you. Now obviously 
that has just been doing the evenings and weekends making this and trying to record the video as well so if you wanted to do this it'll probably take you either quicker if you're skilled or know what you're doing or a lot longer if you have fine attention to detail and stuff like that so I like to end this video on one note I say like thank you for watching all the way through um, I know it's a long video but hopefully you've learnt something interesting and maybe you could take away from this because that's, that's what I aim to do so if you enjoyed the video please leave a like I'll all, uh, always answer your comments so leave a comment if you want to comment and make sure you subscribe because we're going to be finishing this build at some point and you don't want to miss that because it looks awesome I think it's awesome. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.